Welcome to the Making You, an accurate reflection of Christ's podcast, where you become translucent glory. Now here's your host and glory teacher, Karen Pina. Kingdom greetings. I always find the startup process for business leaders interesting. In fact, if I could simply create business after business after business, business and employ the right team to run these businesses, I would. I love the evolution of the creative process. I love how God speaks to me. I'm passionate about seeing all the details unfold in a project task sheet. Can you imagine that? I really get revved about putting all the tasks inside of an Excel spreadsheet. I get elated when I see it all come together just as he envisioned. So on today's podcast, I'm going to pour out all this love and passion on you, budding entrepreneur. So if you're thinking about starting that business, or if you are stuck on what to name your business and struggling with whether to get customers first or get the website first, or hey, maybe you're out here (laughs) cyber stalking all the experts, the gurus and the mavens, hoping to learn a little something about their success secrets, then this episode has your name all over it. I can hear it being exclaimed from the heavens. It's time to jump into this week's Good Eats. So are you out there stalking all the experts, the gurus, and the mavens. Stop it. I know, I know. It's so easy to look at all the experts, the gurus, the mavens, success stories out there, and then follow all of their advice as a strategy for your success. Well, that's not success. That's a limited level of success. It's a secular and worldly approach and God has limitless success in store for you. Heavenly success is your portion, but first you have got to stop stalking the experts the gurus, and the mavens. When my husband and I first started our leadership coaching practice, I signed up for every e-zine, every newsletter, and I read every coaching book that was out there. Because, hey, I wanted to be successful. I followed every coach that I thought had a certain measure of success. So I get it. I get it. I am not telling you to stop walking down a street that I haven't been down. Now, ministry leaders, you are not exempt. You do the same thing that business leaders do. I've seen it countless times. You ministry leaders expend, you know, all this time, money, and energy chasing after another's mantle or air quotes, the double portion of another's anointing. Ministry leaders stalk the experts too. They stalk those that they perceive have achieved some version of ministry success, hoping to expand the work that God has assigned their hands. Like I said, I've been there, done that. I got the t-shirt and I ran around the block and back. Listen, (laughs) listen, I will never forget 
the day when I logged into my email for the weekly binge of business advice from all the top tiered gurus. When I logged in, I was utterly frustrated because I had done everything that they told me to do. Everything that I learned, I did it. And much to my chagrin, clients were not hiring me as their leadership coach. All of a sudden, (laughs) God interrupted my frustration with these powerful words. Brace yourself. It's going to get loud. It's going to get ugly. Stop it, Karen. Get off all those lists and come listen to what I have to say about this business that I gave you. Mm. Wow. I obeyed and I am so glad that I did because it was then that father began teaching me about Adareth. Adareth, that Hebrew word for glory mantle. I discovered that everything I need to experience heavenly success is in Adareth. It's in my mantle. Within this glory mantle is everything that you need to, to start a business in glory. Everything you need to set the right price for your clients is in Adareth. Everything that you need for your constituents and customers is in Adareth. Everything that you need to determine whether to structure the business as a nonprofit, a sole proprietor, a DBA, or an LLC is in your glory mantle. Hear me? In your glory mantle is everything that you need to brand and market including the right colors. So you can stop stalking the experts, the gurus and the mavens because heavenly success can be found in your glory mantle. If you want to learn more about your glory mantle at a ref, go to bit.ly slash register release the glory capital R for register capital R for release and capital G for glory sign up for this class now you are free from following behind the success experts and it's time to come up with a good catchy name for the business. Oh, I wish you could see me. I'm sitting on the edge of my seat because (laughs) it's create time. It's create time. Come up with a good catchy name for the business. Every aspiring or serial entrepreneur like me wants a catchy business name. Now, here's the challenge. How do I come up with this name? The challenge is arriving at this good, catchy name. But oh, the Godhead of glory knows the name of the business. And if you're going to start the business in glory, and you should, by golly, then start by asking him to reveal the name of the business. As a serial entrepreneur, 
every business that my husband and I have had came to us in a dream or a vision, every single one, but it only came after I asked this simple question, what do I name it? If you are called to business like us, then the name has been in existence before the foundation of the world. Think about Psalm 39 and how he intricately wove you, wow, in your mother's womb. Mm. It's in you. All he shanama you got to do is ask him. Ask him. One of the names for our businesses is the Art Stand Online. And this name was given to me just like I'm sharing with you. It came to me in a dream. And my husband was actually sitting out on the beach and he had easels and art stands and canvas paintings and this whole kit of pencils and all sorts of paint brushes and he was surrounded by art and he was sitting there drawing then the dream flip scenes and he was laying out on a lounge chair with an easel in front of him looking out onto the ocean and drawing and I said to God are we going to be selling art on the beach and I woke up and when I woke up He answered my question by giving me the name of the business, which is the Art Stand Online, because we're going to be selling art online. Wow. Wow. So instead of selling art at a stand on the beach, we're going to be offering his masterpieces at an online art stand. Profound, so profound. And you know, my husband often says this, you can't outdo anything when it comes to God. And he's right. May not be good English, but he's right. He's right. You can't outdo God when it comes to naming things. Our God is the master at naming things. This is how Adam named Satan, which shows us that since Adam was created in our father's image, he was born with an inherent knack for naming things. Our God is the master at naming things. He's the master. Hmm. And Adam knew exactly what to name that snake, didn't he? See that? Wow. Wow. Well, I can say that there are still some businesses in the works, and I am confident that he is going to name them however he desires. I'm not getting boxed in to one specific way, but one thing I do know is that the art stand online is a good, catchy name. Because what makes a good, catchy name is that it's memorable. It tells you what services are going to be offered without any explanation. Your customer knows, hey, this is art. And it's being offered online. See that? That's a good business name. The potential customer or client is clear about the who, the what, and the where. A good name. Now, no matter how catchy the name is, this podcast episode is about starting up the business in glory. So that name needs to be aligned with your glory mantle in order to be effective. Mm. It's coming out of you. 
right? From inside out. So you don't need to run around spying on every success guru. Don't need to do it. He is the master. And you can go in any direction that he wants you to go. There are two streets of wisdom that I'm laying out here for you that you can go down relative to a good catchy name for your business. The first is pray and ask God. And the second is to let the services that you will offer speak or reveal that good name to you. That good name, that easily remembered name, that memorable name, that name that's so catchy that your potential client or customer knows exactly what you are providing without an explanation. That's a good name. And a good name makes for a memorable website address. So if you're wondering to web or not to web, well, hey, listen, you're year one. This is your first year, right? In business, you're just starting up and you're wondering to web or not to web. Well, I know that conventional wisdom may teach that the website is the first thing that you need. However, I do not agree. The first thing that you need is to start in glory. Go to the Godhead of glory to find out how you can do what he envisions without, hear me, without a web presence. That's right. How can I do what you've called me to do without a web presence. I know tons of people, many of whom who are ungodly, and they have made millions of dollars on Instagram and social media without a website. They don't even have a web presence. So I am a strong proponent of doing the work. Just start doing the work. And the work is to get clear about what you can do without a web site. And then do it. Do it. You will find as you're doing it that there is a line of demarcation that will be drawn in the sand, so to speak, in this first year, because you really don't know yet what you're doing. You don't know who is right for what you're offering. And the more you work with your ideal and, hey, maybe some not so ideal clients and customers, you're going to find out who is right and who is not right for what you are offering. It's going to become clear all right, who you are marketing to, the more you work, the more you work. So when you start a business, you're learning, all right, you're learning who is best suited for your services and who is not. And you start seeing, and eh, I don't want to work with this type of person. And eh, I don't like working with this type of person. Mm, I can't give away anything else for free. After all, I am in business or, mm, that price was way too low for that service. You get clearer and clearer and clearer about who you are as an entrepreneur in glory and who is best suited for what you are offering. Then you will know what to market and who to market to. And that's when I say go all out and have a website design. Because after all, a website is a marketing tool. And if you 
aren't doing the work, you don't know who you're marketing to and you don't need a website. By the way, I define marketing as gathering information in order to serve who you are called to serve. Can you see how beneficial it can be to do the work in order to appropriately assess prior to heading over to GoDaddy.com to purchase a domain? After the first year, then I say yes to the web. Get on it. Buy the domain name and design it in glory. I want to close by leaving you with this encouraging word. God has great success in store for you. Specifically, he has heavenly success, which is, he defines based on Proverbs 16, 20 through 22. Based on this proverb, heavenly success can be defined as skillful wisdom, skillful insight, and skillful understanding of the revelation of the kingdom of God. You need to be skillful in these three areas in order to pursue heavenly success. When you are skillful in these three areas, heavenly success will always, always result in the riches, the wealth, and the prosperity of the kingdom of God, which always starts in glory. My prayer is that you have been enveloped in love, joy, and creativity in this episode. And I want to continue to empower you in your entrepreneurial journey because you might be listening thinking, "Mm, I've always wanted to start a business, but I really don't know if I am an entrepreneur. Well, I have a entrepreneurial trait assessment that's based on biblical principles that you can take to discover the answer to that question. If you're on a job and you've been shuffled around and you're like, I'm sick of working jobs, or you've got a bad boss after bad boss after bad boss, I've got something for you. Okay. It's called, is it the job, the boss, you, or are you an entrepreneur? Find your career stressors and the success that God intends. Pick it up at bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash boss one. Capital B for boss, capital O for one. Bit.ly boss one. And if you need to learn a little bit more about your temperament, your fivefold ascension gifting and get clear about the developmental gaps in the areas of communication and leadership prior to starting your business, then you want to go to bit.ly my true colors, B I T dot L Y slash my true colors. And if you're ready to discover your glory mantle, drum roll, please. (laughs) <laughs> Go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash register, release the glory. That's capital R for register, capital R for release, and capital G for glory. Bit.ly, register, release the glory. All right. I will see you right back here in the next episode. Blessings on the rest of your week. Karen Pina here, your host and glory teacher, signing out. Thanks for listening to today's podcast. To discuss and learn more about this episode, join your glory community at Bitly Glory School Community. First letter of the words are all capitalized. Finally, be sure to sign up for the RSS feed to know when the next episode is uploaded.